what beautiful colors on that bird. Like, incredible that those even exist. Today, I'm in southeast Arizona with my friend Nathaniel, looking for some interesting hummingbirds on Mount Lemmon. Mount Lemmon is the highest point in the Catalina mountain range, with a summit elevation of 9,159 feet. At the top of Mount Lemmon, it can be 20 to 30 degrees cooler than at the base, making it a popular destination for tourists and locals looking to escape the Arizona heat. In addition to spectacular views and a cooler climate, Mount Lemmon is also home to a variety of unique bird species that can't be found at lower elevations, including our first target hummingbird, the blue-throated mountain gem. We met up with our friend Chris, who is a guide for Tucson Audubon, ready to do some birding on our first day in Arizona. So we just met up with our friend Chris, and we are going to follow him up to the top of Mount Lemmon, hopefully to find a blue-throated mountain gem, but there's tons of cool stuff up there. It'll be a better temperature because it's like 100 degrees down here. And uh, excited to see what we find up there, and can't wait to actually like get out and do some dedicated birding. You pumped, checklist man? Very pumped. Excited for some lifers. We took the winding roads of the Catalina Highway to a picnic area where we got our first glimpses of some new species. The lifer acorn woodpecker? Yes, sir. We stopped at one of the pull offs here. And uh, we actually got Nathaniel, his lifer, acorn woodpecker. And we got my lifer, Mexican jay. So excited about those two. It could be kind of overwhelming because you see all this stuff. And uh, Chris was just telling us about some of the other things we can find. So we're at the, the Middle Bear Canyon area on Mount Lemmon. And what we could see here are painted red starts, Arizona woodpecker, Mexican jays. Um, we could also get other types of birds like yellow-eyed junco. And then at night, we get a whole other array of birds that come here, which are the uh, Mexican whippoorwill, uh, whiskered screech owl. Even, we even have a population of elf owls at this location, which is really exciting. So uh, on every part of the mountain, there's a different layer of birds, if you will, uh, to find. Almost as if they were on cue, we had good looks at a painted red start, as well as several yellow-eyed juncos, and a few more Mexican jays looking for scraps around a table. We had some nice pickups here at this pull-off. We had the Mexican jays, the acorn woodpeckers, there were a pair of painted red stars kind of showing off. Uh, but we're going to head up now higher to the area where we should get some cool hummingbird activity. So um, hopefully we'll see some good birds there too. We arrived at the Palisades Visitor Center and immediately saw hummingbirds, including a broadtail perched in a tree. Broad-tailed hummingbirds appear large-headed, and adult males have a pink gorget, green back with dark wings, a light stomach, and sometimes rusty-colored flanks. Females and immature birds share similar colors to males without the gorget patch. These birds can be found year-round in parts of Central America and breed in select areas of the western United States, sometimes as high up as 10,500 feet. On cold nights, broad-tailed hummingbirds will go into torpor, a slower metabolic state similar to hibernation, until temperatures warm the next day. They are normally found in meadows and open woodland areas and feed on nectar and insects. While looking at the broad-tailed hummingbird, we heard the mountain gem vocalizing from one of the pine trees. So we heard the mountain gem. Yes. Just gotta wait for it to come in. Right. It's got like a doorstop squeak. More broad-tailed hummingbirds came to the feeder, and Chris told us a little bit more about how these small birds survive the heat. Hummingbirds like, uh, prefer to feed in the shade during these hot summer months, so they don't overheat. A lot of times they'll be, their bills will be open, and they'll be expelling the heat from their body, but they also will be in the shade to also minimize that amount of heat that they're getting. Eventually, the mountain gem flew in, giving us great views, and even showed off its signature doorstop squeak before perching back in the pines. The blue-throated mountain gem is the largest hummingbird species that nests in the United States and has an attitude to match the title. 
They are territorial at feeders and flowers, using their vocalizations in large size and weight, which is about three times that of the ruby-throated hummingbird, to fend off other birds. Males and females have a greenish back and gray stomach with two white facial stripes, and adult males have a sapphire blue gorget. These hummingbirds occur year-round in parts of Central America and sometimes move into the southern United States during the breeding season. Blue-throated mountain gems normally inhabit higher elevation conifer or mixed forests between 3,000 and 13,000 feet and feed on nectar, insects, and arachnids. We got the mountain gems. That's an awesome bird. Um, had some nice looks coming to the feeder. We're going to kind of go across the street to try to see if maybe we can uh, find an olive warbler over there. But super stoked about the hummers. Chris was saying when you see it, it'll just be like, wow, that's a big bird. And that was exactly my first thought. I was like, wow, that's a huge hummingbird. And it definitely dwarfed all the broad tails that were in the area that were way more abundant than the mountain gems, but sweet find. Without having any luck on the olive warbler, we left Palisades and headed up to Summerhaven a small community on the top of Mount Lemmon that's popular with tourists, but also has a group of permanent residents. Here, we staked out the bird feeders to look for a Rivoli's hummingbird. We made it to Summerhaven, the town on the top of Mount Lemmon. We are checking the hummingbird feeders. Right now there's some goldfinches and a hairy woodpecker hanging out, but um, we've only seen a broad-tailed hummingbird, which they've been pretty common so far. What do you think of Summerhaven? It's a cool city, cool town, probably not a city. Cool birds. Didn't you just call the hairy woodpecker trash though? Definitely was not referring to the hairy woodpecker when I said cool birds. <laughs> Ouch. Eventually, the feeders started bustling with activity, and a variety of different species stopped by to partake in the feast. We saw another blue-throated mountain gem, and then an extremely colorful large hummingbird stopped by, the Rivoli's hummingbird. Oh, Rivoli's, Rivoli's, Rivoli's. Left side. Nice. Wow, look at that throat patch. That thing's gorgeous, nice. man. Look at that. Beautiful bird. The Rivoli's hummingbird is the second largest hummingbird found in the United States, and also has one of the highest heart rates of any vertebrate, coming in at 420 to 1200 beats per minute. Adult male Rivoli's hummingbirds have a black body with green on their wings, a purple crown, and a turquoise gorget. Females have a gray stomach and white line above their eye. In 2017, the magnificent hummingbird was split into the Rivoli's, named after the Duke of Rivoli and the Talamanca hummingbird. The Rivoli's can be found in the United States south to Nicaragua, and the Talamanca lives further south of that. Rivoli's hummingbirds are normally found at higher elevations, between 5,000 and 9,000 feet, in pine oak forests and feed on insects and nectar. Just had the hummingbird we were looking for. There were a bunch of broad tails and then it came in and chased them all away. I was kind of thinking we should head out because we hadn't seen one. Um, and there's other targets we want to look for, but what beautiful colors on that bird. Like, incredible that those even exist. After spotting our last target Hummer, we checked out some forest trails and did manage to pick up our Lifer Hepatic Tanager. As we were driving down, listening with the windows open, um, there was a hepatic tanager, which was new for us. We got quick views of it. Um, unfortunately, we had people down behind us and we had to kind of leave quickly. So didn't get to enjoy it, but add it to the list and uh, definitely a cool bird to see. With darkness approaching, we made our way back down Mount Lemon. All in all, we had a great time looking for hummingbirds and seeing other notable high elevation species, including the hepatic tanager. Have you ever been to Mount Lemon before? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.